Welcome everyone. Super excited to be here. Super excited to be joined once again, like I am every week by the wonderful Professor Jason. Jason, we've got a banger today, a, a, a topic that uh, might might spur a little controversy and uh, might have a, a little fun for us. I would say so. I mean, we've got we've got a list and anytime we have a list, there's always going to be some potential disagreement there. Yeah, I, I don't think you and I are going to disagree with each other, but I think some people that consume this podcast may may disagree uh, with our list. And and listen, Jason and I, I'll speak for him here. Neither one of us are proposing that if you keep these fish, you're a bad person. Uh, but we do believe that uh, there are certain fish that should not be kept in aquariums, period, unless... It's like a public aquarium. Um, there's certain fish that just should not be in the hobby. And that's probably a better way of framing it is fish that shouldn't be in the hobby. Um, and that's what we'll title this. And that's what we're discussing here today. I've got my list of fish. Uh, Jason has his. And uh, we compared the list and, well, they were very similar. <laughs> yes, they were. Um, I did a video back in like, 2019 that was the 10 fish that i believe should not be in this hobby exactly what we're talking about today mm -hmm. and uh it was the number one performing video on my channel for several years yeah so this is a topic that people are interested in and there's plenty to say and i'm excited to do it in this format because we can elaborate and we can really go into why we believe these fish aren't right for the hobby um and, and I think it'll create some some pretty fantastic discussion. Um, you know, and the other, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you, you didn't. You go right ahead. Too, is depending on whether or not we have the time, it would be kind of cool if we had some honorable mentions. Fish that, well, maybe they could be in the hobby, but they do require really extra special care. So if we don't get to them in this video, I think at some point in a future video, we should do the next group down. And that is fish. Yeah, they're here, but most people shouldn't have them. I, oh, I mean, I've got probably five or six that pop into my head right away when yep. when you say that. And uh, some of them I may happen to be keeping at this very moment. But uh, but I do have one of the fish that's on the list uh, of fish that I'm going to be mentioning today. Um, and I'm I'm not a hypocrite. Uh, I'm going to explain myself as to why it's OK that I have one, but a lot of people probably shouldn't and that's that goes with exactly what you're talking about i would rather give mine up and not have it be in the hobby anymore than to see it be abused the way it is and you know what listen let's just get right into that one why don't we i mean i've already brought it up the very first one that i'm talking about here is a fish that should not be in the hobby is actually sitting right over my shoulder almost like we planned it that way the common placostomus um i've been an advocate for these fish for a long time because I, I do believe other than goldfish I believe plecos are the most mistreated fish in this hobby and it's because people get them for re a reason that they're not really for and I saw it you know this about me Jason I used to go to to 10 houses a day with my job fixing people's furniture and before that I was a cable television technician in my teenage years, and I would do the same thing, I would see aquariums every day. And I would see them a lot of times with common plecos in them. And we're talking about 20 gallon tanks, 29s, 55s. And people don't realize how massive these fish can get. Uh, I, for today's discussion, don't necessarily want to talk about people abusing them. I want to talk about why I believe they should be removed from the hobby. And that is what went down in Florida. And I'm sure is still a problem to this day where there was just the areas were completely overrun with these fish. And it's because pardon my harsh language here. It's because dummies were buying these fish, putting them in their aquariums, realizing that it's kind of a weird, boring fish not being interested in keeping them anymore, or they got too big for their tank and they went out and released them into a waterway somewhere 
which they then find another and they reproduce. And next thing you know, they're riding on manatees as they're swimming by in Florida. Um, that's, that's one of the main reasons, but abuse is the number one reason because almost everybody, I hate to say it that way, but almost everybody that keeps a common placostomus is putting them in an aquarium that's too small. And for me, the reason why I said I'm not a hypocrite, I've got my common pleco in an eight foot by three foot tank, which is much better than what most people are doing. So even though I have a fish that's on my list, the only one that's on my list today, um, I still do believe I'm, I'm one of the rare people and I'm not tooting my horn here. I'm just saying most people don't keep them right, but I believe I am keeping them right. You know, and what's kind of sad about the common pleco is how common they are in the hobby. When you go to the big box stores, you walk in there and what are they selling? They've got the common pleco there and they should know better. The, the larger corporate, I mean, all fish stores should know better, but especially the, the, the big box stores should know that the overwhelming majority of their customers are generally people who have been in the hobby for a very short period of time. And they are looking for, just as you mentioned, they're buying them for the wrong reasons, because why are they buying them? This is a fish that is going to be, it's going to eat algae and it's going yep. to keep your tank clean. And even worse, if you have someone who maybe is new to the hobby and they're the employee at one of the big box stores or any fish store for that matter, they're going to eat fish waste. Right. So now you've got a fish that, by the way, no fish eats fish waste. So let's just get that out of the, out of the way right now. Not your catfish, not your plecos. They don't eat fish fecal matter. That's right. The common pleco, when they are small, might eat some algae. But then you look at the fish in your aquarium, it's huge. And these are fish that are going to way go way over 24 inches, right? So easily, easily, easily two feet. And that can happen even in a smaller four foot tank. And now, like you mentioned, what's happening? Most people are looking at this two foot common pleco that, by the way, is a tank buster. You've got mm -hmm. the tank set up exactly the way you'd probably have it for the least amount of, of headaches when it comes to those larger fish, but you want a planted tank, you want decorations, you want your intakes to your filters to remain attached. <laughs> the common pleco is going to ruin all of that for you because they're just big. They're big and they're clumsy fish. They stop eating algae. They never ate fish waste. And oh, by the way, you mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. What was one of the issues you had in that tank when it came to filtration? Uh, in, in this tank here, yeah, the immense amount of fish waste that's left on the bottom, they are one of the biggest waste producers. There's some kicking up behind me right now. Yep. They're out of control. Is that what you're talking about? That Absolutely. Yeah. And that pleco is probably the biggest culprit to what you just saw oh. there. And so not only are they not eating the fish waste, they are producing a lot because they are mm -hmm. constantly grazing. And now you've got to feed them all the sinking pellets. And that stuff is just getting torn to shreds as they're eating that as well. So it's it's a fish that you, you've got the, the 360. So that is, again, you've got the, fir, the perfect footprint for that tank and that's eight feet by three feet when people ask hey I'm, i want to get a common pleco what should i get i always say get at least an eight foot tank and it's got to be at least minimum bare minimum of two feet wide but three feet is realistically better the height on the tank isn't quite as important because they don't utilize the height because you don't see them eating the algae off the glass anyway but you still want a tank that's going to be a couple feet tall and that by the time you get there you're really close to that 360 so yep your four foot tank is not large enough and they will outgrow. They actually grow relatively quickly and they're, they're going to outgrow that four foot tank. They're going to outgrow your six foot tank within a couple of years. And now what do you do with them? Well, and here's the funny thing about them too, is that I have never experienced a more indestructible fish than the common pleco. I mean, they can, you can be the worst fish keeper on planet earth and still keep common plecos and to be perfectly happy. I mean, they're, they're just indestructible. I tell a story about a, a friend of mine that is a, as a dear friend of mine to this day, I was the best man in his wedding. Uh, he was in mine too, but my dad was my best way, my best man in my first marriage that didn't work out too well. But anyway, wow. I don't even know why I just talked about that, but I've Still known this, eat, John. <laughs> I've known this guy since I'm in 10th grade in high school. Uh, one of my all lifelong best friends was the only person I knew that had an aquarium after my boss at the cable company. 
and he had a, a 55 gallon tank in his bedroom and he just lost interest in it. And instead of taking it all down and, you know, putting it away, he just basically turned everything off and just let it sit. He got rid of the fish, but just let it sit. And eight, nine, 10 months goes by and the water's just going down, 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 down. Well, he forgot about the common pleco that he had in that tank. And guess what? It was still alive, still perfectly fine. He didn't realize it until he went to finally dismantle the tank and take it down. He was like, oh, there's a huge fish in here still alive. I don't know how it didn't make noise and he didn't hear it ever, but he's kind of, yeah, he's not the smartest guy. I love him, but he's not the smartest guy in the world. But they are absolutely indestructible. And the other thing, too, is there's better options. Right. I think right. that's something we can address throughout here. You've got the bristle nose pleco. The males are going to max out at around six inches. They don't produce the same amount of waste because they're a much smaller fish. The females stay even smaller. You've got the clown pleco that's even smaller, maxing out at around three inches or so. And those are much better suited for the vast majority of aquariums. So th there are options out there. And oh, by the way, they also do a better job of eating the algae that you want on the side of the glass than the common pleco would ever do. I was going to say, they actually do what you bought the common pleco for. They eat the algae. The only algae that I've seen that I can confidently say the common pleco is a really good killer of is just the brown diatom algae. If you have an aquarium that is infested with that early on in your, in your aquarium's life cycle, a common pleco will wipe that out very, very fast, but you will deal with what I deal with in here, which is foot and a half long brown spaghetti noodles laying in the bottom of your tank. That's absolutely horrible. The last thing I'll say about them is, uh, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the, the last form of abuse that I see about these fish is people don't feed them. People think... Yeah, yeah. Well, they're eating the algae, they're eating the fish poop, they're eating the food that falls down and they don't feed them. These are catfish. They have the appetite of a catfish. I did a reaction video on my channel a while back where I talked about, uh, or, or I showed a video that was a common pleco in the tank vertical eating flakes that were floating mm -hmm. on the surface. Oh, yeah. And the guy was like, is this normal? And I was like, yeah, it's normal. It's because you're not feeding your fish. First of all, he's in a 29 gallon tank. And second of all, you're not feeding him. He's hungry. He's going up there and eating. It's not normal behavior for a pleco if he's fed properly. But if you're not feeding him, then of course, I didn't say that to this guy. I just said it as a part of my reaction to it. Um, they're not they're not fed the right way. Um, they're kept for the wrong reasons. They're purchased for the wrong reasons. They're sold for the wrong reasons. And when things go bad and you've got one that's as big as mine, I think that's him there. Uh, you can't get rid of them because nobody wants them. And so you end up throwing them in the river and they end up sucking on a manatee. And next thing you know, there's an absolutely brilliant video done by my friend, Steve Poland, who you also know. Um, and it's, I think other than the Ohio fish rescue, the most popular video on his channel, millions and millions of views, where he actually did a whole video about the issue with plecos uh, invading, being very invasive to the Southern Florida area. Uh, definitely worth checking it out. If I can remember, I will link it in the description of this video. But hey, listen, we're not going to talk about common plecos throughout this whole video. What is the first one that you have on the list? Even if it's a duplicate of mine, it's okay. We'll uh, we'll, we'll still talk well, about it. The, the first one that I have on my list is one that especially 15, 20 years ago is way more common. It's not as common, but it's still there. And I still see them showing up in pet stores all the time. I still see them at the swaps and I'm like, what are we doing? It's the iridescent shark. The iridescent shark, of course, it's got the name shark in its name. And so people are like, oh, it's a shark. And <laughs> it kind of sort of looks like a hammerhead shark a little bit. And usually when you find them at the pet store, they might only be three or four inches long, right? And they've got that cool, almost like shark sort of swimming nature to them, which most other sharks in the freshwater hobby don't really have, right? I mean, you call them a shark and I guess that you can get away with that name mostly because they have kind of the body shape, but the iridescent shark actually swims like a shark, which makes it pretty cool. The only problem 
if I may. There, well, there's a lot of problems, but one of the main problems is this fish is going to get massive. When you start measuring fish in pounds, right, their weight of the fish in pounds and tens of pounds and maybe 100 pounds, you're like, oh, okay, wait, this is going to be a really large fish because an iridescent shark can get three or four feet long and weigh many, 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 many pounds. So mm -hmm. that's a problem, right? You put that little iridescent shark, I've got my first big tank. I have my four foot tank or my <laughs> even my six foot tanks like and I've, ha I've had that question asked a million times. Hey, I just got some iridescent sharks. They're in a 29 gallon. I, I know I need a larger tank. What size tank do I need? And I'm like, 15 foot tank, 20 foot right. tank. I mean, we're, we're, we're going to stop now with the gallons because you need something that is incomprehensibly large. So measure your living room. Do you have 20 feet of space? <laughs> and then you got to give yourself about six feet of width. And ideally, you'd want about a tank that's four feet tall long term because the iridescent shark doesn't like to be alone either so now right. you've got problem number two and problem number two is this is a fish that likes to be in groups how are you keeping your two three four foot fish in large groups which is going to make them feel comfortable because that brings us to the third problem of all of the fish i have ever seen the iridescent shark is the the most it is the one that is the most skittish of any fish it freaks out for no reason all the time. You yep. turn the lights on, it's bouncing off the glass. How many of you, if you've seen an iridescent shark, have seen that thing where the face is all just beat up? It's just, oh my gosh, what is going on with this thing? Because that brings us to problem number four is usually when you're keeping iridescent sharks, you need a lot of swimming space. Forget all the driftwood, forget all the big rocks everywhere. They need space because when they do freak out and they will, you walk up to the glass, they're going to freak out. You put the food in the tank too fast, they freak out. And you've got a heck of a mess. That is absolutely positively a fish that should never be sold in the hobby. The Pleco, your Pleco, you could make an argument if you've got a tank your size, cool, right? You're, you're caring for it properly, but it should be a rare fish. It's not something you should be seeing all the time. The iridescent right. shark should not be in a pet store, period. Because I agree. there is less than 0.0001% of people who have a a system large enough for the iridescent shark. Essentially what you need is a large indoor pool to, to house those fish properly. Totally agree. And, and I would uh, expand on that a bit. And I would say that that should be true for every fish that is called shark. Uh, even the rainbows, you've talked about rainbows in the past, rainbow sharks, uh, the trouble that they can cause, even though it's not size that's the real issue there. Um, they get bigger than people think, but they're not going to get big like the iridescence, ballast sharks, anything that ends in shark. I, I just like to tell people, just trust me on this one. They get way bigger than you think they do. Yeah. You see them in the store. They're cute and they look like this. And little Timmy got a, got a hundred percent on his quiz today. And so he gets rewarded by going and getting a fish and he says, I'm a, I can get a shark. Wow. I want one. Yeah. Cause look, they're just so cute. It's, it's trouble waiting to happen. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad you brought up the the skittish nature of the iridescent shark, because that's something I forgot to mention about the common pleco, because the same thing. You'll see them and they they'll do it for no reason at all. You'll just see a common pleco sitting there and all of a sudden, bam, it's banging itself up against the lid of the tank. Iridescence will certainly do that. They can cause damage. They can go right through your lid and end up on the floor. Absolutely. I mean... They can I, go I, through the glass of an aquarium. I have seen right. videos where an iridescent shark breaks the aquarium glass. It literally breaks the seam. Wow. They can generate, the, they, of all the fish we, well, I'm looking at the list of the fish that we're going to talk about. With the exception of maybe one, in terms of the amount of torque that they generate when they take off, it's it, it could be really close to the fastest fish in terms of just absolute burst of energy for that first five feet or so. It's like a sledgehammer hitting that glass yeah. from the inside, which is the last thing you want around your aquarium. Yeah, I mean, the, the you know, the, the thing is with almost all of the fish that we're gonna talk about today is there are just so very few people that are ever gonna have an aquarium that can accommodate something like that. I talk about how big this tank is, it's, it's eight feet long, and that's really big for our hobby. You don't typically run into people that have eight foot aquariums. Um, 
And I, I said, you know, a minimum of eight feet for a common pleco. Really, I, I would say six feet, but even a six foot aquarium is rare in this hobby. I mean, it's only the absolute crazy people like you and I, I've got, how many do I have that are six feet long? I've got a lot of them, but most people have their little four foot tank and that's a huge one to them or their little 24 inch tank. There's no way either any of these fish that we're talking about can be uh, housed in something like that. You know, the old, for, the old saying it's keeping a Rottweiler in a crate the size for a Chihuahua. I mean, yeah, but it's so true. I mean, and, and I always tell people, and I get these emails all the time. I just got one yesterday. I know my tank's too small, but I plan on getting another tank within a year. Don't make that mistake. If you're somebody that you have these aspirations, I'm going to buy a 10 foot tank. I watched King of DIYs video. I know how to make one. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to make a 10 foot tank in about two years when I get my Christmas bonus. No, just no, because your, your brakes are going to go bad. Your air conditioning is going to break. Something's going to happen. That's going to occupy that money and you're not going to be able to do it. Right. Absolutely. All right. What do you got next? I'm going to, I, I, I did say one when we were going through our lists before this, that made your eyes perk up a little bit. I'm going to save him for last to me, okay. the, the absolute joke of the aquarium hobby. It should be a joke that this fish is even available. I'll save him for later. Uh, but I want to talk about one that caused mass hysteria. Not anymore, because I'm pretty sure everybody in the hobby, or excuse me, every state in the United States has banned these fish from being in aquariums. I know, uh, I don't know about North Carolina, but I know when I was in Virginia, they were banned. Um, I did buy one because I was dumb in my early, early days. Um, and I had to travel to the state of Maryland to get it because they were not le illegal then. But then they very quickly became illegal. And it's for the exact same reason that we're talking about uh, with the plecos, people releasing them. But the, the thing is, this is a fish that in, in my area, the mid-Atlantic area, is also very commonly found in rivers and things like that. We're talking about the snakehead. Um, I got to be honest with you. Of all the fish we're going to talk about today, this is probably the coolest looking fish out of all of them, there is a reason why it has the name snakehead. It's a really cool fish that looks like a snake. Yeah. And it, it doesn't have the long slithering body of a snake, but it's a, a snake head on a big burly body, almost like the body of a catfish. It's, it's, it's a really, really cool fish that has absolutely no business being in aquariums. And I remember this happening. I think it was in the 90s, like the late 90s. There was like news. I put clips of this in the video that I was referring to earlier. I put clips from the news, people talking about the mass hysteria, the, the snakehead invasion, fish that can walk on land is the way they described them. When you think about a fish that is on land, if it's moving, it's because it's just flopping and moving because it's flopping, where a snakehead can actually somehow manipulate its fins or whatever and kind of move and can stay out of water for up to an hour. And so people are afraid that these monsters are going to come out of the water and they're going to eat their feet and all that. It was nuts. It was actually kind of silly, but it was, there was mass hysteria in uh, Maryland and Virginia over this uh, and they both banned them. So it's not really worth spending a lot of time on because you'd be really hard pressed to find these fish to even be able to put them in an aquarium. But there are people that have them. I've seen them. I've seen YouTube videos of them. So I guess they're catching them and then bringing them home and putting them in an aquarium, which I think for a fish like that is tragic to do that. But uh, they're out there. You just have to work harder to find them, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I, and I think that is the vast majority of what you see on YouTube is people finding them in nature, putting them in an aquarium like you would a uh, pumpkin seed, sunfish or something like that. Right. And I will freely admit, I want one so bad. <laughs> I want one so bad. It is top three of the fish I want the most in my life, but I would never do it because they are a problem. They are an environmental issue. For those of you who have never seen a snakehead, you need to Google 
the snakehead and just see how magnificent these fish can be. They really imagine are. to me what they look like. Imagine a killifish and all their brilliance and all their color only much, much larger. What I don't know how big they get because I haven't done enough research, but what are they like? Maybe three feet. I, I think feet? it's between two and three. I think I, three I could feet, be wrong. Yeah. Uh, and a, a really personable fish too, but very much understand the, the problem is when they get into nature as they have, they're extremely invasive. So they are good breeders and they destroy ecosystems by eating smaller fish, which then basically travels upstream. And so those large predatory fish that are supposed to be all along the East coast, they're being out competed for food. And now their populations are being decimated and the snakehead is a very hardy fish. So, right. uh, just like you said, with the pleco, it, it, it's going to, it's got some staying power. It's going to be very difficult to eradicate that fish. In fact, I, I don't think it's going to happen, but it is a beautiful fish. Thankfully, like I said, if you see these things on YouTube, either they're coming from people who have them in other countries, or maybe you've got people who have tried to keep them in an aquarium and there are laws against that. So be very careful. If you go out and you catch fish in nature and you bring them back to your aquarium and you start throwing them all over YouTube, you better be careful because you better check with your state and local laws because you might have some people showing up at your house asking you about the stuff you've posted on the internet. So not necessarily something that is advisable to do. Yeah, and I mean, if if we're being brutally honest with each other, I'm not a big fan of people doing that with any fish. If it's small, like little sunfish, like you were talking about, stuff like that, that's one thing. But what I've seen and I've heard just from talking with people, with people saying like with largemouth bass and stuff like mm -hmm. that, they'll catch a bass, they'll bring them in, they'll put them in their 300 gallon aquarium, they'll raise them up. And then when it gets too big, they'll put them back and get another one. Uh, okay. Uh, I mean, you're, you're not torturing the fish that way, but Lisa has a lot of cats that are in our house and they are domesticated cats. They are fed food that's from a can every day. They're spoiled. They lay around. They have no fear of predators, nothing like that. If you were to release one of these cats into the wild, they would stand no chance. And that's my fear with these fish. You're, you're pulling a largemouth bass out of a lake and raising it up and then putting it out there. And it's like, what do I do now? Like I'm used to the food falling from the sky. What am I supposed to? <laughs> I know I'm, I'm being very soft when I talk about that, but that's yeah. the thing I, I don't like about it. So I'm not a fan of people doing that. Um, but you know, there are those people and I used to be one of these people for about a month, uh, that are entertained by fish that are just nasty. And uh, you put a whole steak in there and they'll just annihilate it and put rats and stuff in there. I mean, I'm not interested in that. That's not something that entertains me. Um, but you know, we're all into whatever we're into and that's, that's fine. But I, I do agree. And I, I wasn't clear about that in the beginning. They are fascinating looking fish. They're amazing looking, the snakeheads. They're awesome, but uh, they have no business being in somebody's home aquarium. Yep. Agreed. So my next one, are we, are we ready to move on? I didn't want to cut oh, you yeah. off in case. Yeah. Go right ahead. About the snakehead, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, my next one, actually, this is a more recent observation and it was a fish that you used to find in more pet stores and you still can find them. I, when I do all the fish door tours as you know, you walk into pet stores all the time when we're going all the different aquashellas. So I get a really decent idea of all the pet stores and what they're doing throughout a large portion of the United States. And I saw this one more recently and I could not believe that they had a price tag on these fish and were selling them to the general public. There is no tank that is going to be large enough to house them unless you are looking at a large public aquarium. And that is the sturgeon. Yes, mm -hmm. folks, the sturgeon. <laughs> I saw these fish in an aquarium and they were like, oh, 50 bucks. And they were maybe six to eight inches. And don't get me wrong, of all the fish we're talking about, if I, I placed the snakehead number one, sturgeon would be a very close number two. They're insanely cool looking, love these fish, yep. they look like dinosaurs. Yep. And again, they used to be more popular, certainly back in the eighties and nineties, you could, I could find them fairly regularly at the pet stores. Eh, there's just a couple problems. Again, remember, like we were talking about with the iridescent shark, the sturgeon makes the iridescent shark look tiny mm -hmm. because they can grow <laughs> 10 or 12 feet long. Yep. So what size tank do I need? Your home. 
right. take your home, <laughs> put up some glass walls, fill it with water, put your sturgeon in your house. Mm -hmm. But you got to move because now it's a fish tank. Uh, or do you have a lovely river in your backyard that is somehow enclosed because you could put your sturgeon <laughs> in the river, which is where they're normally found throughout the Mississippi River. So you could do that. But short of that, even even if you had an in-ground pool, you're still probably looking at a fish that is going to be too big for your in a standard in-ground pool. Right. It's still going to be too big. These fish. Now, there's only one other problem with this fish. They tend to live way longer than you do. So not only will you have this wonderful sturgeon, you're going to have to will it to somebody else who's got a river in their backyard or perhaps a <laughs> massive, 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 massive in-ground pool. It's like and, having a tortoise. Yeah, it's like having a tortoise. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And by the way, they do like cooler water as well. So I don't know why these things would ever, ever, ever make their way into a pet store. It's just downright stupid to me that they do. And please, if you see them, yes, they look cool. The, you should be asking the store owner, who, who buys these fish? How do you know that they have the ability to care for them? Because that's insane. Uh, it truly is. The sturgeon is not a, not a fish that should be in the hobby. I completely agree. And they are, uh, to my knowledge, extraordinarily rare in the hobby. I have seen them. I've seen them in pet stores, like you said. Yeah. And I just shook my head like, really? Um, the analogy that I would use, it would be like, People complain, uh, you know, this guy lives in a two bedroom house that's only a thousand square feet and he has a Rottweiler. That's not big enough for a Rottweiler. Well, that would be like that guy keeping a elk. You know what I mean? Like that's how yeah. big a sturgeon is going to get compared to a, a Rottweiler. I mean, they're, they're just, there's just no, it doesn't make sense. And right. I don't, I, I know one person, one person, and I know a lot of people that are crazy and keep water and and glass boxes and i know one person that could house a sturgeon and that's the ohio fish rescue and that's because yeah. they have that absolutely i don't know how many fifty thousand gallon pool indoor pool that they converted into a pond the only person i know that could actually house that fish properly any of the fish that we're talking yeah. about um i really think and uh, I don't want to put stores out of business, but I really think if you see a fish like that in a store, you got to question, wow, what is this store's motivation? Or, or is it just all about the money or what? Yeah. And, and keep in mind, there are, we got to be really careful here. There is a, a, a species of dwarf sturgeon, which is quite a bit smaller. That's not what we're talking about here. And that's not what I am referencing when we're, when we're talking about sturgeon in general, we're talking about the ones three, four feet, you know, 10, 12 feet long. Those are the ones we're discussing here. Yeah. 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 I don't have much more to say about that fish only Me because either. I don't know a whole lot about him. I do know a guy, I uh, will not name his name. Uh, he was a YouTuber. He, he got out of the hobby, um, that, that bought Sur Sturgeon. It was a lifelong dream of his, like yours is with the snakehead. Uh, and he got him and he had a pond that he was keeping them in. But then I don't know what happened. I don't know if they passed away or I don't know what happened with them. Uh, and I haven't talked to him in a while, but um, they're very, very rare to see. And I think it's to me, a sturgeon is one of those fish that's just obvious. Like, no, you can't put that in an aquarium. You just can't do that. Uh, and there's another fish we're going to talk about there at the end. I, I hope you know the one I'm saving. Oh, yeah, I know. Very end. I know the that one one's going to be. Trust me, you're going to want to stick around to the end because you're going to have you all listening and watching. You're going to have opinions on this one uh, guaranteed. And we will, too. Well, let me clarify. Is that the one that. Um, the, OK. All right. Okay. Forget it. Well, I don't know if you and I are on the same page as far as maybe the one I want to save. We'll, we'll find out. Because you're going to do your next one now, right? Maybe we'll I'm, have, maybe everybody will have opinions on this one. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Let, let's, uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens towards the end. We'll build the suspense. There's really two that are uh, kind of like, one of them can definitely cause a, a, a stir, but we'll see. Anyway, I want to yeah. talk about one of the creepiest fish in the hobby. I know it's on both of our list. Uh, and this fish is creepy for one reason and one reason only. It has a full set of human teeth 
in its mouth. At least it looks, it looks very human teeth. Talking about the Paku. Ah, yes. The Paku is a really cool, kind of boring, uh, really cool fish that you can still easily find regularly in the hobby. And, and again, it's the same, we're a broken record here. This is a fish that gets bigger than people think. You see them in the store and they're the same price or the same size as Oscars. They're, you know, a little two inches when you buy them and you pay $9 for them. But we talk about all the time how big Oscars get. Just if you're watching this on video, look behind me and you can see it. Pakus get five times the size of Oscars. I mean, yeah. they get absolutely gargantuan. There's nobody that I couldn't keep Pakus in here. I mean, for maybe a year or two, I could keep them, but, uh, and they are, you could take a Paku, you could throw it in the back of a truck, drive it down the road, roll it down a hill, throw it out of the truck and then run over it with the truck, put it back in the water and it'll swim right away. <laughs> I swear to you, they could survive the apocalypse. They are absolutely indestructible. And Yes, we're we're probably going to touch on you're the scientist so you'll be able to do it better than me. We're probably going to touch on stunted growth at some point in this video or this podcast, but uh I don't think pakus ever get stunted. They just keep going. Yeah. And they'll grow to a point where they just won't even be able to move in your 55 gallon aquarium and they're going to look at you and they're going to open their mouth and they got human teeth in there and it's creepy and it's weird. I feel so bad for them. This is the fish on the list that I look at and I just go, Oh, that is such a shame because they I'm being silly. When I talk about them being creepy, they're, they're just cute and kind of yeah. innocent looking. They wouldn't hurt a fly. Although I've heard stories about them biting people, but whatever. I just, I feel bad for them when I see them in pet stores and, uh, and I don't think that they should be sold because most of the people that are going to buy them are going to be putting them in 29 and 30 gallon aquariums. Yeah. Well, first of all, you threw me way off my game because when you taught, when you said you were going to take the Paku and run it over with your truck, the first thing that popped in my head was when it was Napoleon dynamite, when Kip puts the Tupperware under the van, Dang <laughs> it! that's what you're doing with the Paku. It yeah. looks like a, you ever heard of nylon, you ever heard of a Paku? <laughs> yeah. Lance, you look like a strong young pup. Why don't you see if you can give that fish a tear? Uh, sorry. All right. I'll move on. Hey, no, but well, at least I know the movie you're talking about. Last, last podcast, good thing. you referenced a movie and I don't remember what it was. Like you never said what it was, what you were oh, referencing. But, no, but, but whatever it was, I remember people commented and they, they caught the reference. So that was pretty cool. Uh, Paku. Yeah. Great fish. It is a happy looking fish. I think it is the happiest looking fish that we talk about. It's actually a relatively peaceful fish, like you said, yeah. uh, mostly a vegetarian. So that's kind of cool. I made the mistake in the 90s where I had a 75 gallon and I had a group of, I think it was like four or five silver dollars in a 75 gallon. I went to the pet store and I was like, oh, I need some more silver dollars. Like well, we don't have any more silver dollars, but we have the Paku over here. And they were about, the Paku was a little bit smaller than the silver dollars I had. Like you said, it was a couple inches. And they said, don't worry, typical line. This thing will only grow to the size of your aquarium. I'm like, oh, cool, because I, I just wanted to add one or two more. So I grabbed this Paku and I threw it in the 75 gallon. And I am not kidding you. It was half the size of the silver dollars when I first purchased it. Within two weeks, it was the same size. And it schooled with the silver dollars. It was hilarious. Within about two months, it was now twice the size of the silver dollars. And the silver dollars were now following it all over the aquarium. I eventually moved and I'm like, I, I had to get rid of all the fish because I just thought that would be easier when I moved. And I brought back in those days, PetSmart would still take fish. And I brought the Paku along with some other fish and they took it and it looked so stupid. They had it in one of their aquariums and it was literally taking up the whole thing. And I went back a week later and somebody bought it. But when you're talking about Paku, not only are you talking about a fish that could, yeah, I mean, you're looking at a fish that can be two, three feet long, but it's also really tall. It's almost tall. as tall as it is long. Yep. So now it's like, well, what size tank is appropriate? You're Again, you're looking at, do I have a pool? Because right. this is another fish that likes to school. So you're not, you shouldn't be just getting one. You should be getting, you know, buy six or more, you know, just like mm -hmm. you would with any other fish that's going to school together. 
And now you've got a fish where, yeah, I need a large in-ground pool or a, a big, big, big lake in my backyard. And then that might be sufficient. Keep in mind, these are food fish. That's primarily why they're caught and how they're used. You know, when people catch these fish, like, oh, great, this is going to feed my family because they get absolutely massive. So another fish that I would say on this list that is very skittish. Right. These are fish that just like silver dollars, lights come on, you bump the tank, you walk by too fast and they're flying all over the place. Another fish where if you give them enough time to build up some momentum, they can crack the glass. They will absolutely destroy fish tank lids as a lot of these fish will that we're talking about on this list. But Paku in particular can. Yeah. And the the worst story that I have about Paku, I don't think I've told this story on the podcast yet, but I'll keep it brief. When we had our store. I had a 150 gallon aquarium with two very large full grown red devils uh, and, a, and an Oscar actually. And a customer of mine that was a regular came in and said, I got this Paku and I just need to get rid of it. It's getting too big for my tank. Can you take it in? And I'm like, okay, I guess, you know, he's a good customer. He brings it in. He took this Paku out of his 55 gallon aquarium, stuck it into a, a, a five gallon bucket it was kind of bent in the five gallon bucket face oh, wow. down in the bucket and its anal fin was sticking out or its tail fin was sticking out of the top of the five gallon bucket it was gigantic and so i'm like well okay the only thing i have is to put him in that 150 and uh the next morning he was no more and i feel sure. horrible but i i didn't think i'm like this fish is four times the size of these red devils. They're not going to mess with them, but they did. And, and I, I still feel bad about that because he was cute. He was massive. I say he, I don't know if it was a he or she, I, I felt horrible about, uh, sending that fish to its death. But, but yeah, I mean, it, it is an adorable fish. I feel so bad for him. Um, if you see him in a pet store, just run, don't fall for their cute faces. Yep. <laughs> I hear you. So what are you coming out with now? All right. So I actually added one to my list that we did not discuss ahead of time. But as we were talking, I'm like, oh, this is definitely one that uh, is, is kind of interesting. So the knife fish, right? Not necessarily talking about the ghost knife, but the actual, the knife fish, right? The big giant silver one. The These clown. are huge, huge, huge fish. I remember seeing them at the aquarium, the Cleveland Aquarium, by the way, if you ever want a recommendation of a public aquarium to go to, if you're into fresh water, the Cleveland Aquarium is one of the best ones. I did a number of videos on that place when, um, when I went there, it, it's just awesome. But they had these, these knife fish there that had to be at least three feet long and probably a foot and a half tall, pretty close to full grown, massive, massive fish. And you still see these very predominant in the aquarium hobby. And it's actually, it's, it's concerning because just like everything else we've talked about, what size tank do you need? Now they're not nearly as active, right? So now we're, we're certainly getting into a less active fish. And that's always a consideration when you're coming up with tank size, appropriate tank size for a fish. It's not just how large they are, but how active are they? But even in your 360, I think you'd really be pushing. I, I, I personally, again, I'm looking at 10, 12, 14 foot aquarium. That's probably four or five feet wide. And because they are a little bit taller, at least four feet tall, I think long-term would be a, a appropriate size tank. So knife fish, really cool. Very interesting. People love them because they have that, that odd sort of look to them. They look kind of menacing, yep. but too big of a fish for 99% of people who are fish keeping. And the sad thing is when you see them in the, in the pet stores, you might see them at four or five inches and they look amazing. Yep. But they're going to outgrow your tank. And then once they get larger, they're going to start attacking other fish and, and eating them. One thing I will say about the clown is you're not going to find a more unique fish. Mm -hmm. And you want to talk about one of the, a standout that is one of the coolest fish in the entire hobby an albino clown knife fish yes forget about it that is one of the most amazing freshwater fish species i've ever seen um 
I'm glad you mentioned the, their lack of activity. These are very, very lazy fish. And yeah. what I've found about, I had one back in the day in a six foot tank. I was a bad person. What do you want from me? He would sit in one spot all day facing the back of the aquarium. And one of the neatest things, yeah, they have the really cool, unique shape to them. It almost looks like an alien, but their face is so cool looking. And that big scoop of a mouth, I mean, it's a really cool, but if I got one and all he's doing is sitting like a dunce with his face in the mm -hmm. corner, like, oh, <laughs> come on. That's, uh-oh, oh, oh no, my camera back. just you flickered. You didn't lose audio. Uh, that, uh, yeah, that was a disappointment. Uh, and the other thing, this is an example to this fish, the one I was just talking about, uh, just like the others that we've talked about is, can be very skittish. And when they go, they go fast. And I had, uh, the middle of the night, one night, um, I heard a huge crash and it was that clown knife banging itself up against the lid of my tank and he broke his back when you oh. look at him he was like a horseshoe and i i had no choice but to but to put him down the next day i mean what else am i going to do he was right. it, it was it was horrible um and i was so broken hearted over that but very unique fish but i agree the amount of people that are capable of housing a fish like that are very very few and far between yeah so you got a fish on your list. I mean, we're staying with the clown, or you know, we're talking about the knife fish, one that's a similar shape. Do I? You do. Starts with an A. Okay, but see, I'm glad you brought that up because that was the one that I was saving as. You're saving that one. Oh, I thought you were saving the one that starts with another letter. Uh, yeah. Another see, letter. and that's I started to understand there that okay, that's what so, you were thinking. Well, now this... that we've re partially revealed one of them or both of them you can go with whatever one you want well i no i'm not going to go with either let's save those two because they are bangers let's save yeah. those two for last okay. i want to bring up one that i know we both have on our list in fact i think yeah. uh might have both might wait a second no no you did clown knife uh i was going to say it's your turn um we both have this one on the list and this one yeah. is one of the first that is an absolute no-brainer should not be in the hobby. I don't care what anybody says. I don't know anybody, again, except for the Ohio Fish Rescue. And that is a very special case with those people. Uh, the red-tailed catfish. Yeah. This is... For, for a catfish, it's pretty attractive. Because, you know, the red tail. I wonder, yeah. wonder why it's called red tail. Um, it, most catfish are pretty ugly. Let's be honest with each other, but the red tail is a standout. They are really nice looking when they're, you know, eight, nine inches. They will not be that way for long. And these are the definition of tank busters. They can get a hundred pounds. Yeah. I mean, come on. Like, and my experience again, same 125. I had one. I was dumb didn't know anything. Uh, I had one and I would feed night crawlers and that fish would eat so much that it would literally sit on the bottom of the tank because it couldn't swim because its belly was blown up like a golf ball from all the night crawlers that it ate. That's, that's kind of funny. It's not like, you know, that's not a reason not to get them, but uh, other than, you know, the other fish in your tank won't be able to get any food because it'll hog it all. Um, uh, it's just the sheer size. Just do a search on Google, red tail catfish. You're going to see people holding them up with both arms and they're just, ugh, it's unreal. Veins are popping out of their neck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, people struggling to pick them up. These things can get the size of a St. Bernard. You know, it should be common sense at this point, but, uh, absolutely just no business being in not an eight foot tank not a 10 foot tank it is one of those room sized aquariums that to me really only a a public aquarium is going to be able to house something like that yeah and that's funny you mention that because i i believe don't quote me on this although i'm saying it publicly i'm i think it was the dallas aquarium that had a huge display and it was a manatee display and they had a group of red tail cats in this aquarium. Well, I say aquarium, I mean, it's housing manatees. I don't know how many 
hundreds of thousands of gallons this thing was. I've seen really large red tail cats, but I have never seen them as large as they were in this certainly 100,000 gallon plus display. They had to be closing in on four feet. They were that big and well over a hundred pounds. And there was a group of them. And actually when they swam next to the manatee, they were, they didn't, they weren't dwarfed by the manatee. I mean, these things wow. are massive, absolutely positively correct. Again, this is another fish, unless you've got a pond, unless you've got an indoor pool, you're probably better off not buying these fish. And they, they do grow relatively quickly, not super active, right? So like you said, you feed them, they just kind of mellow out. Yep. If you want a catfish that looks like that, that's actually manageable, get a Raphael cat. You know, we've had a Raphael cat now. First of all, those fish will live like 30 years. We've had it's yep. the oldest fish we have in our fish room right now. Very, very hardy fish. I think ours is probably, uh, oh my gosh, holy cow. It's probably it, well over 15 years old. And right. they're going to max out maybe around eight inches. Small mouth, so not eating all of your other fish, but they do the same thing. They overeat if you mm -hmm. let them, and they will just sit there on the ground and be like, okay, I'm basically a bowling ball now. So you got to be a little <laughs> careful there. But yeah, the red tail cat, no need to have those in the aquarium hobby. I I love Raffies. I'm glad you brought that up. I call him Raffies because I used to be a big Rafael Nadal fan, and people yeah. called him Raffy. So I was like, hey, that's cool. I'll call that catfish that. But yeah, Raffies are awesome. I love those uh, red tail cats. I love those too. But yeah. I, I've only known, again, every single one of these statements is going to end with, except for the Ohio Fish Rescue. But yeah. I, I, I don't know this guy, but I know a guy who knows the guy. I don't know if you've ever seen it. There's a gentleman in Toronto that built his basement into an aquarium. It's like 55,000 gallons. Wow. Um, he's a, a disabled guy. And I don't know, I don't know why I felt it was appropriate to bring that up, but he, he's in a wheelchair and he had this constructed. Basically, they, you just have to see it. I don't want to spend all day talking about it, but he had his basement basically converted into a 50,000 gallon aquarium. I think he has one. Um, I know he's got other fish we're going to talk about on this list. That guy can have one. He, he's sure. fine. But, but people with their 125 gallon tank in their living room, don't get a, uh, red tail. I agree with the Raffies. I think those are absolutely awesome. Now we need to get into the two controversial ones, uh, cause we're almost up at an hour here, which is surprising. Yeah, wow. And we're going to spend some time on these. It's your turn next, I think. Yeah. Cause I did red tail. Okay. Why so do you I... want, do you want the one, which, which one do you want me to do? I want the one that starts with an A you've already mentioned. Okay. So All right. I figure you did. Okay. Yeah. So then I will go with the one that starts with piranha. <laughs> so um, this one, again, we're talking about a couple of fish. This one, I think on the list will be the most controversial in the sense that a lot of people have them. A lot of people have had them. And to say they shouldn't be in the hobby, I get it. There's going to be a little bit more pushback with this than the other ones. But there's a few reasons why you might want to consider steering away from piranha. Uh, one, they are a sizable fish. They're not, I would say, surprisingly, I'm just looking at the list here. They're the smallest. Yeah, they're, they're definitely yeah, the I smallest think they are. of the fish that we're talking about. Maybe going to max out, you know, usually under a foot or so, right? Um, I would call but, that big if it was a foot. Yeah, yeah I mean relatively speaking, it's big for most hobbyists, you know, so they're, they're probably going to stay under a foot. They take on a similar appearance as your silver dollars. You're going to get a little bit bigger, a little bit more, a little bit more wide bodied. Obviously they've got the teeth and everybody's like, Oh my gosh, look at those fish. They're going to eat your face. And I saw the scary movie and I'm going to get <laughs> these awesome fish and everybody's going to love this aquarium and I'm going to love this aquarium. And it's going to be just something everybody wants to see. And then you buy them, the little guys. Little guys are actually somewhat active and they, they are fun to feed and all that stuff. And especially if you're into the live, you know, live feedings, which I don't like that. I know you've gotten, you, you said maybe you went through a phase when you were young. I pretty much didn't go through that phase. Well, I guess I did. I guess I did in my teens, but this is a fish that is potentially a tank buster. Again, you're talking about it. If you don't keep them correctly, right? If you go on YouTube and stuff and you see some of the aquariums that are really kept properly, they can be okay. But keep the lights low because they don't like bright light. They freak out a lot. Got to keep them in groups, large enough groups. They're not just going to kill each other off. That will keep them more confident. 
no sudden movements around the tank. You know, you don't want kids banging on the glass because they are. That's another one where these fish, it's very common when you look at their face, they're all beat up, just like mm -hmm. the urine shark that we talked about earlier. They're constantly going to be bouncing off of things if they're not kept properly. But here's the real potential disappointment for a lot of people. These awesome fish that in this tank that you think is going to be so cool, you've basically just bought a half a dozen or really which should be a dozen, 15, 20 fish tank ornaments, as I like to call them. They just sit there like I'm you're so glad you said that they just there's if you've got them, so you boring, them, hey, that's good for you. For me, I find them to be boring because yes. they're just fish that sit in a tank and they don't move. And they'll just stare at you. And yeah, you put the fish, you know, you might, again, if you're feeding, they'll, they'll become more active there. But 23 out of 24 hours of the day, they are literally just sitting there. Sitting yes. still. Again, if you keep those lights low enough where they are not hiding, by the way, behind all the stuff, then you just got fish that are like, oh, well, there's my piranha. Are they going to ever move? No, they don't really. They're not into that. They're not, I thought you said this tank was going to be awesome. Well, look at the teeth. Okay, I'm over it. That I saw the teeth for three seconds, but do they do anything? Right. So that's why you got to be really careful. And by the way, if you want a tank that's going to be that that tank behind you would be a good tank for a sure. group of product, a 360. If you ever converted that, that could certainly be an appropriate size tank. I would probably want to give them enough space to give them enough open swimming room and give them the structure. If they feel like, you know, kind of retreating a little bit, keep the lights low, that tank, the 360 that you've got behind you would probably be a, a pretty nice setup. Not a huge fan of keeping them in most of the standard six foot tanks that you'd find the two twenties and the two forties. You're sort of pushing the lower limits on tank size around that size. People do it. You know, people try to keep them in six foot tanks, but I believe that's, that's, a, or I'm sorry, a 125 or 150. I believe that's a mistake, but the two twenties, two forties, still a little small to keep them in a group. That 360 you've got behind you, you're, you're starting to get into a tank that's appropriately sized. But then the question becomes, do you want to, and I'm sorry to say this piranha lovers, do you want to waste all that aquarium on fish that are just going to sit there? And yeah. yeah, when they get big and you can really see their teeth, Sure, they look menacing, and that might be cool, and that's fine. But, uh, but yeah, don't. <laughs> I, I've had this happen to me so many times, and I'm absolutely certain you have too. My Oscars love me when I walk up to the tank; they swim up to it. And if I'm putting a siphon hose in there to clean up the large spaghetti noodles off the bottom of the tank, guess what they do? They come up and they, they give me a little love tap. My Oscars do. If that happens with a piranha, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> It Not will really hurt a love tap. Yeah. I've got two friends that have videos on YouTube that are, have, were, you know, severely not like life changing, but like drew blood, you know, pretty significant bites yeah. that they had from them. Um, my, here's the thing. This is the one fish I would agree with you. Uh, it's the smallest. There's, there's no debate. And by the way, when I said I would call that big, when I said a foot, I would call that big. I meant I, I would call that a big piranha if it was 12 inches. Oh, right. I yeah. think they stay even smaller than that. Uh, 12 inch fish is a big fish, regardless of how you look at it. But um, this is the one fish that I, I, I'm not going to say I don't want in the hobby because they're not kept properly. They, a lot of them are, including the one that I had when I was a teenager that I put in a 20 gallon tank and I, gave him away like six months later because he was boring. I only bought one. I was dumb. I don't know what you want me to tell you. I, I was not a smart person back then. I bought it because of it's a piranha and I saw right. the toy and I saw Richard Pryor run on the water and it was hilarious and I wanted a piranha for that reason. But anyway, um, it's not mistreatment of these fish that keep me from wanting them in the hobby. It is the people, and I've known these people, I have talked to these people that look at throwing a fish in the lake or throwing a fish in the river as a means of getting rid of it. A piranha? You're going to do that? Really? That's, that's, that's letting an alligator loose in a pen full of chickens. I mean, what do you yeah. think is going to happen if you do right. that? And it, it does happen. And this is how areas get overrun with plecos and uh, snakeheads and things like that. So, um, I, yeah, that's that's the biggest problem with I have with it. I think that the aquarium hobby as a whole 
has gotten smarter than that as far as releasing fish into the wild. I don't think it's a huge problem anymore. It used to be a really big problem. Still is, but not nearly as bad. And a piranha or a group of piranha is quite literally the worst fish you could do that with. Uh, it'll kill human beings. It could. I mean, I know they make movies about it, but you know, <laughs> just why? Why would you do that? Yep. And it's not... It's not an attractive fish. They're very boring, like you said. Agree 100%. It's just not worth it. It's, and the only reason you're doing it is so that you can tell your friends, yeah, I got some piranha. Stick your hand cool. in there. See what happens. Yeah. You want me to put something bloody in there and watch them swarm? Come on. Yeah. I mean. And, and the big thing, too, is talk to people who have kept them, right? Ask. Find out. You, you'll start to see a trend. A lot of people who have kept them did not keep the, the colony of piranha they had until they eventually all died of natural causes. They're usually like, yeah, I just got sick of the tank or I got bored of the tank. Yep. That's probably of all the fish that we're talking about here. And most, it, it might be top three fish that people get rid of because they get bored of that yep. particular type of fish. It's, it's gotta be in the top three. That's right. I agree. Uh, the expectations are, that's going to be this magnificent thing, but you put it in there and, and they're just a dud. They really are. Yep. Yep. Um, but now it's time. <laughs> it's time. Share with us the the one, the one that uh, I on you know. I thought that this one was going to be the biggest no brainer of all, and then you threw that curveball in there with the sturgeon, because um, <laughs> I would I would put this in the same category as the sturgeon. But I got to tell a little bit of a story here. I went to a pet store. Uh, I'm not going to say where it was because you know whatever. But this was a pet store that specialized in fish that you typically wouldn't see in other stores. Um, a lot of the fish that we've mentioned here today, piranha, um, red tail cats, pakus, snake, snakeheads, maybe, I don't know. Uh, you would find these there. You'd also find things like datnoids. What's that fish that quite literally looks like a dinosaur that has the two big teeth that stick up? It's... It's got a weird name. I don't know. Fish that just look like something out of a Pixar film. I mean, just oh, wild. Are you about the saltwater fish with the light on its head? No, no. I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have brought a pet store. There's a fish that has a really big head and a skinny, long, thin body. And it just has oh, these. The, the dragon fish. That's that. Um, are you talking about the, the brackish water fish? They call it like a dragon fish. It's blue. No, it's not that one either. I'm sorry I even brought it up. One of these days, I'll think of it. It's a really cool looking fish. Uh, this is the only store I've seen uh, with them in it. Um, if we had more time, I would look it up. But uh, anyway, who cares about that particular fish? While I was in this store, they had a 150 gallon aquarium in the back of the store and it was full of the coolest looking fish I'd ever seen. I had not seen these in a fish store before. I'm looking at them and I'm like, these are really neat. They are long, not skinny, but like like a long sausage. They looked like they were about 10 inches long. And there was, I'm not kidding you, probably 40 of them in this 150-gallon tank. They were all going crazy. It was the coolest thing I've ever seen. And then I looked at the writing. You know, they used the, the, the white paint markers to write on the glass what they were. They were Arapaimas. <laughs> and I was like, oh, wait a second. We have a fish in here that can get 12 feet long, 10 to 12 feet long and 400 pounds. We have these in a 150 gallon tank for sale for $179 a piece. Is this real? Like, are you joking with me here? And I mean, there's no, the sturgeon... <laughs> Sturgeon was a great example, and I was really counting on being able to say there's no better example of a fish that shouldn't be in the hobby than arapaimas, but sturgeons are, are right up there, too. Uh, listen, if a, a, a show like River Monsters does an entire episode dedicated to a fish, you know it's not a fish that should be in an aquarium. And again, the only person that I know that can house one is that guy in Toronto, which I don't know him, but Big Rich over at Ohio Fish Rescue has an arapaima in his big pool. It's magnificent. I would love to go there and see it in person. 
when I go to public aquariums, the very first thing I want to see is where is the Arapaima tank? I can't yeah. wait to see that because they are, they're unbelievable. They're gorgeous. They're really unique. They kind of look like a cross between a clown knife and a, and a catfish. And uh, you may have even alluded to that earlier. It looks like a hybrid of all of those things. Yeah. Just a gorgeous fish, but no business being in a glass box in somebody's living room. It's it's outrageous. Uh, and and guess what? I went back to that store six months later, and they were all gone. So somebody bought them, uh, or a bunch of people bought them. And uh, I'm willing to bet those fish are no longer alive because... Yeah, and- they could be. That's the thing. I mean, that's another long living fish. And I, if you're ever looking, if you are in the Midwest and you ever want to see Arapaima, the aquarium, Wonders of Wildlife Aquarium, it's associated with Bass Pro Shops in Springfield, Missouri is, again, outside of Cleveland Aquarium, I think that one might even be as good, if not better. Those are probably the two best freshwater public aquariums. I've seen they don't only have freshwater, but I mean, their saltwater is insane, but they have Arapaima there and the tanks are many, many, many tens of thousands of gallons and slow moving, very methodical. I mean, this is a fish where you're like, this thing could eat a human being and not even probably be right. full. Yep. Uh, it's They're really cool. Not, I'm not saying they're going to eat you, but uh, yeah, it's a fish that almost nobody can, can house. I mean, you're probably looking at outside of public aquariums, like you said, there might be just a handful of places in the United States that could safely keep one and for the long term. Well, and speaking of which, I was in your neck of the woods a couple of years ago and we went to the Shed Aquarium and they have them in there. Uh, and yep. uh, it's funny, I took a picture of Lisa. One of them was swimming by and it took him about a half an hour to swim by because they're very slow, like you said. Yeah. And Lisa spread her arms out and she was about half of what yeah. that fish was. And I took a picture real quick. It was fascinating. Used it as a thumbnail in a video and it, it worked out pretty good. But um, yeah, one of the most magnificent fish I've ever seen in freshwater, period. I mean, I love the Arapaima. You want to talk about lifelong goals, that would be one of mine. It would be to yeah. properly be able to house a fish like that. But you're talking about something you know, you're not even going to put an Arapaima in a 20 foot wide aquarium. You know, you no. need something that's the size of a warehouse. And so I've come to grips with the fact that I'm going to be 50 this year. Well, after you turned 50 and uh, <laughs> I already did. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I will, I've come to grips with the fact that I'll probably never have one and that's okay. Um, but it, just unbelievable. And it's even more unbelievable that it's even for sale in the hobby right. and I've seen them in multiple pet stores for sale and it's just disgraceful. It is. It's like all these other fish, right? I mean, seriously. Um, and, and the thing is too big. that one, you know, I, I said in the beginning of this podcast that we are not going to say you're bad people if you have these fish. Um, but what I will say is, and I can confidently say this, Anybody that's listening to this, if you have an Arapaima and your name is not Big Rich, you're not doing this right. <laughs> I mean, well, I, I'm not. We're going to get a comment not, like, well, I happen to have a 40,000 gallon <laughs> aquarium in my backyard, so I'm doing it right. I'd be happy to admit that I was wrong if that's the case. But I, I don't, you know, this just, it's so extraordinarily rare that a, a private person could even afford an aquarium unless you're LeBron James. I mean, how are you going to buy an aquarium? And most people aren't going to be willing to convert a massive pond, uh, pool into a pond for an air Pima. Uh, I'm so, I, I think it's so amazing that Rich did that. Uh, and it's so cool to see that fish. One of those, one of these days, I'd love to be able to get there and see that fish in person, but it's worth it. I've been there, I think three times. So wow. it, it's cool. Yeah. Um, one of the, you know, the only example of somebody that I personally know that's, that's doing this right. And yeah. could be said about pretty much all the fish that we mentioned here today. I think Absolutely. he's got almost all of them there. Uh, with the exception of this, he does not obviously have the snake head cause it's illegal, right. uh, but he's got everything else and he's got, he's does he got have albino versions of the iridescent shark, the ghost knife, the Paku, I believe even, uh, he doesn't have the sturgeon. I don't think, at least I don't remember there ever being a sturgeon there no because he keeps that 
that pool pretty warm as well. So I don't know if right. the sturgeon would be a good option there anyway. So, yeah, I mean, but there there's the cool thing about this hobby is that there's so many fish that you can keep. Yeah. Why keep one that you're never going to be prepared to keep uh, like pretty the common pleco. Okay. We can make the argument that a lot of people can keep those uh, piranha. A lot of people can probably house those, but uh, most people, are not going to be able to do it right. So why bother when you have so many other options of fish that'll fit comfortably in whatever size aquarium you have, just, just do this right. You'll feel better and you won't hear me criticizing you about it. Um, but that's that. I mean, we could that's probably, it. this could be a four or five hour episode. Cause we oh, didn't yeah, touch. We, we could certainly do a part two. We didn't touch on gar. We didn't touch on arowanas. I mean, there's so many yeah. that, that we could mention. Uh, so yep. maybe we'll have to do an honorable mention episode. Yep. I think we'll point. have to do a part two. That's like, you can keep these, but <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a great title. That's there we go. Right. That down. You heard it's it perfect. here first. Yeah. <laughs> so All yeah, right, want... this one, I, I, oh, I'm sorry. I was going to go ahead and close it out. Are you, you want to yeah, do it? Go. Yeah, go do it. Uh, I want to thank you for listening. This episode was a lot of fun. The list videos are always fun. We need to do these more where we go back and forth. Uh, that's that's a lot of fun to do. Uh, we certainly do appreciate the response that we have received on this podcast. It's been so overwhelmingly podcast. Uh, uh, what? That made no sense. So overwhelmingly positive. And it is why I confidently say, I didn't do it in this one, but I confidently open up these episodes sometimes with the number one podcast on the internet that has to do with aquariums. I feel confident that way, saying that because of the way that all of you have responded to this. It makes us feel great and it makes us very excited to uh, record new episodes. So uh, I've enjoyed this one very much. Jason, you uh, yeah, say the final all. words here. Yep. Thank you so much for being here. And as always, we will see you next week, same time and same place.